a Republican in Florida by the name of uh, Angolia is looking to pass a bill called the Ultimate Cancel Act or SB 1248 which would um, cancel any parties that was affiliated with slavery I'm talking about like Democrats in the 1800s which are the Republicans nowadays uh, due to the party switch and if you know anything about history though this dude is only doing this to troll Democrat Democrats um, for what he believes is like canceling other people or the removal of statues and renaming of stuff so tonight, let's talk about this Florida, Florida state senator's push for what's being called the Ultimate Cancel Act that would basically get rid of the Democratic Party in the state of Florida. Here's the deal. And if you're like, wait a second, Hallie, how's this going to happen? So let me walk you through it. The bill would require that the state's elections board, basically the division of elections, would immediately cancel filings of any political party whose platform has ever advocated or supported slavery. slavery. The proposal does not explicitly mention Democrats, but... If you think back to your like eighth grade social studies class, right, pull out that old book. During the mid 1800s, the Democratic Party at that time did support slavery. If this bill passes, it means that something like 4.8 million people in Florida would go from being registered Democrats to having no party affiliation come July 1st. It's a response to what some Republicans have called cancel culture from the left. And really the latest bill that fans the flames of what a lot of people see as these culture wars between Democrats and Republicans, and specifically in a hotbed of all of this, which is Florida. Ali Vitale has did, did a lot of reporting in Florida, Ali, um, and you, you know that state well. I think it's funny how Republicans pretend to not uh, support cancel culture and do things like this. Uh, it, is this something that is being introduced to get headlines, right? Is the ultimate cancel act and to get people thinking? Does it actually have support? Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty big troll. And the lawmaker in Florida who is sponsoring this effectively copped to that on Twitter when he was faced with the idea that this was just a very big political trolling act. But at the same time, this is also something that speaks to the larger ethos in Republican Florida politics right now. It's partly why you're seeing Governor Ron DeSantis use this as sort of his incubator before he takes the whole show national. Because look what this one Florida lawmaker is saying sort of by way of explanation for this. And you can either see it as serious or tongue in cheek. I think either of those are critical. But he says for years now, leftist activists have been trying to cancel people and companies for things they've said or done in the past. This includes the removal of statues and memorials and the renaming of buildings. Using this standard, it would be hypocritical not to cancel the Democrat Party itself. Yeah, um, this should be taken seriously because if um, Republicans actually have it their way, they would do something like this and remove uh, the Democratic Party and disenfranchise millions of people uh, so that they can gain and keep power. For the same reason. Again, a lot of language in there that seems pretty tongue-in-cheek, pretty trolly, but Republicans have a supermajority here. You remember, the whole state went red. It wasn't just Ron DeSantis who won by 19 points, which in a state like Florida is pretty wild for a margin. It's also happening throughout the state at the legislature level. So this could be something that passes. I mean, I'm, I'm going to watch and see. They've got the numbers. It's just whether or not they actually want to go through with the full troll. But, right. They have the numbers. Do they have the appetite for, like, fulfilling the troll, as you say? And it's not like yeah. I mean, Florida's Democrats are like, yeah, this is a publicity stunt, they think. But it speaks yeah. to this broader, whichever side of it you're on, this broader thing in Florida, which is the idea that it is a... Um, like an incubator for some of these culture war issues that we see pop up in other places around the country. Yeah, it's sort of like an epicenter for anti-wokeness, and that's the point. For DeSantis, the way he's endeared himself to the conservative grassroots is by taking on these culture wars and largely legislating around them in schools, on COVID, on a whole number of different fronts. That's the point for him, especially as he takes this national, as he considers a presidential bid. The reason why advisors say he's so focused on the Florida legislative session, why he might delay a presidential bid announcement till the summer, is because this is the tangible outgrowth of the culture wars. DeSantis has been able to take them from theoretical talking points on Fox News 
actually into tangible policies, and he's doing that in part because he's got the numbers to do it in the state legislature. Yeah, that is actually the scarier thing about DeSantis. He's actually been able to get a lot of things passed in Florida that, um, like, uh, the banning of books and schools, uh, the, the like, anti-woke act, um, the banning of uh, EP African history, and various other things. If he becomes president, it's going to get even worse.